Yeah, so this is uh, Tidal, which is um, a little language that I've made inside another language called Haskell. Do you want me to talk to you or to the camera? Talk, talk to me. All right, okay. <laughs> um, and uh, I'm running it in uh, inside this very old school editor called Emacs, which was made by um, a very interesting man called Richard Storman, who might just save the world one day if he can stop getting so angry. So this is um, uh, a tidal pattern. It's a very simple one, so I'll just put in two things in here, a bass drum and a snare. And I'll send, say that this is a, these are sounds, and I'll send it to my synthesizer via this thing here. And so if I run that, you can hear there's a bass drum and a snare. So D1 is channel 1. Yeah. So I what, can run what? another one at the same time, in fact. Um, maybe three claps at the same time. Um, and then I can stop that one. So the idea is that this is something I can build up over time um, while it's running and increase the complexity until it sounds interesting. Uh, What's the um, so what's the dollar sign for? The dollar sign is just really for separating things. Um, I, without that, I'd have to wrap it all in brackets. So it doesn't actually do anything apart from take this and pass it to this. Um, so you can ignore the dollar sign. It's just a syntactical thing. It just divides these things up. Um, so in here, within the uh, quotes, is another sort of language inside this language, which is just for specifying polyrhythmic patterns. So I can do um, you kind of hear that. There's two things here and there's three things here and they don't match up so you get this kind of falling over feeling when you're listening to it. Um, so title's very good for making um, uh, polyrhythms. Are, are those um, those abbreviations? They relate to instruments. That's right. But are those instruments um, samples, or are they? They're not like sample files, or are they? They're more in the software. Or? Um, yeah, they're samples. I've got a folder um, of inbuilt inbuilt samples. That yeah. Come with it. Yeah. And you can add more to them. Uh, if I remember where they are. Yeah. Here we go. So, CP means clap but actually what it really means is this folder CP here. And if I look inside, so there's two WAV files. Um, and what I'm doing here is just playing them. So I, I can pick the second one like this, slightly different. Um, or if I use numbers. One, 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 two, 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 five. Two. Five. Two, five. And that's because there's a folder with um, they're just WAV files of someone saying those numbers. Um, what so what key do you how do you, you you sort of type and then you press a number to activate it, don't you? To run it. That's right, yeah. So what what what's your command for that and how does that work fluidly? Um yeah, so it's uh, yeah, if I hold down control and press enter, you see two, it flashes. Five, two, five, two, five, two. And that means that that block has just been sent to Tidal. Does Tidal work on, uh, is it using um, a sort of default beats per minute or is that something you can change in yeah, terms of that cycle that. of yeah. how things are played back? Yeah, so it's all based around cycles so that, that plays every cycle. And I can say, 
um, two cycles per second, or 0.4, or 1000. Yeah, because it's sort of handmade software, it hasn't got any limits built in, and so it's possible to break it quite easily. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. So we've got a nice polyrhythmic se sequence here, um, but it doesn't stop there. We can explain again the function of in that in that. Uh, yeah. line you've got a comma and then something else then some brackets yeah and okay. how does that affect how things are read and played back well they're sort of layered up so in this case um it would do um the snare the clap then the snare and then you've got a new sub pattern here separated by the comma so you'd have bd times four which is like a little drum roll and you'd have this which is um, a high tom, a clap and a high hat in the same space and then you have a low tom and so these little sub elements would line up but because there's two here and there's three uh, sub elements here although this sub element is and they all have there. to fit in the same cycle yeah because it just distribute them across that cycle then in terms of like thirds and halves it can do, so if I, um, that's how it does it if I use square brackets. It just squashes things into the same cycle. But if I do it with curly brackets, what it actually does is take that, this bit as the cycle and then just repeat these and leave this till the next cycle. So you end up, um, oh, where that came from? Uh, having it repeat like this. Ah, but it's alternated. Yeah, so that's how you get this polyrhythmic effect. Um, so it would line up like this and would only repeat every third cycle in that way. Um, okay. So it's diff yeah. Um, so that's uh, quick introduction to the, how the sequences are made um, but then the next level is manipulating those sequences so I can do things like reverse them for example but difficult to really hear the difference between that and that just playing it forward and backward but what I could do is have it only reverse in one speaker, which is quite hard to hear on my laptop, but um, <laughs> yeah, so at one side is playing the pattern forward, and at the other side is playing it backward. Um, and I can also do things like increase the density of the pattern, which basically um, Fits two cycles into one. Yep. Yep. I could do two point five or one third, which slows it down. Um, again, I could just run that in one speaker. So jux means juxtapose, basically. So that means in one speaker it's running faster than the other. Um, so there's quite a lot of these sorts of things you can sort of. Gradually okay. shift the pattern. So it started off sounding quite straightforward, but now it's starting to sound a bit crazy, which is good. Um, but I can pattern other aspects of the sound, like how fast it plays the sound. So now they sound sort of high pitched. So on the, they're in the same rhythm, but just much the shorter. Yeah, the actual sound, yeah. each sample is played back faster, which makes it sound shorter and high pitched. Um, and I'm patterning that as well, so... Uh, 
And if I use minus two, it should play them backwards. Uh, okay. <laughs> so I've got two patterns playing against each other, sort of combined into um, synthesizer messages, but it's just like you're patterning the sound and then you're patterning the speed of it, or you could pattern the, um, uh, the vowel sound. So that's filtering the sounds so that it sounds like the vowel that I'm typing in. So that sounds like ah. So it's adjusting the form and frequencies. Here I keep stopping it to make it easier to talk, but if I was performing I'd just carry on changing it while it was running. Um, yeah, so I can do the uh, echo, what's that called? I haven't used that in a while. Delay, I think. Yeah. Um, oh, that's that lady. Right, okay. Um, so you, you've, you've like here you've created a couple of samples which you can turn on and off, yeah, and call on and then adjust. Mm. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So I'm just um, working with samples. And then you can add your own WAV files as well. Yeah, yeah. That's what those people do. Um, yeah, maybe I'll show you um, this guy, uh, Mike Podnik, um, has a patent called 365 title patterns. So about a year ago he started this project, I think it was in January actually, where he, every day, he'd make a, one of these patterns. So here's one here. And uh, yeah, so he's made his own samples, put them in as well. Um, and over, since January he's been learning Tidal and really getting to grips with it. And he's probably better at using it than me at this point. So this is pattern 361, he's got four more and then he'll reach his goal of making 365. This little bit of text generated that um, sort of experimental drum and bass loop. Um, here's another one, see how this sounds like. Maybe? So he's pasted his code there, but actually, yeah. when you're doing it, your code changes. Yeah. So what, does it, how does the code he's pasted really relate to? Well, he's made a little composition, really. Um, I mean, he does live coding as well. Um, he performs with this, but this is sort of what he's done to learn Tidal. But they're like little pieces of music, really. Sort of so, so in a sense, this... Music. Yeah, so this is like a recipe. Yeah, like made. A recipe. It, it doesn't change, but... Yeah, so how how is he build, able to build structure into um, that? Yeah, so he's done things like every third repetition do something, shift it to the left. Um, he's... Uh, yeah, let's try out some of these things. Can't really see. Oops. Ah, oh, God. Um, well, there's a little bit of structure there, it seems like it's shifting between two different things. So, if we wanted to 
make this change a bit more over time. Maybe we make it a bit more conventional. Every third repetition, shift to the left. Um, we could um, when mod. Um, so every yeah four cycles out of every eight, we could um, superimpose something like. Line coming in every now and then. I don't know, so there's lots of different things you can add on top basically. Um, I'm not really feeling this one just at the moment. Sometimes just changing the BPS can complete. Uh, Cycles per second can make it sound a bit better, but yeah, not really feeling that one. But okay. so yeah, basically make some patterns and manipulate them, and when you get sick of them, stop and then try something else. <laughs> um, yeah, I could also sh quickly show you. Um, that you can so what I'm doing here is starting with a long sample like um, a break um, and then chopping it into lots of bits and then patterning those little bits individually. So reversing them or um, shifting them in different ways. So you can quickly So that's a bit different from starting with of uh, samples, just start with one sample that's a loop and start just messing it and chopping it up and moving it around. Um, so yeah, that's basically a quick intro to Tidal. Thank um, you. Any other curiosities? Mm.